Ladies, gentlemen and others, today we have a powerhouse from the field of journalism and travel. Someone who has worked in journalism for almost two decades, someone I consider a very dear friend. I love how politically incorrect she can be sometimes. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Welcome to The Real Deal with Anam C. Ayindrala. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. I have to start out this episode with giving the disclaimer that I'm going to sound extremely Janice like and nasal. I am powering through a cold. It's not COVID. But if you do like this episode in general and not just my voice, which like Phoebe, I think sounds better when I have a cold personally, please go ahead and review and rate this episode. It is something that I would love to see what you guys think of the podcast. Angela. Yes. I'm very excited. You're so someone who has been in journalism for 20 odd years, two decades. Makes me sound really old makes you sound really experienced oh well two sides of the same coin (laughs) but yes it's been about two decades you're right what i didn't know about your career which i realized while i was talking your linkedin was that there were a few months in the middle where you hopped over to shall we call it the dark side away from content not (laughs) the dark side really i think it's a it's it's a pretty symbiotic relationship today um well, yes, I did move to uh, communications and PR. And I think today as and I don't think it's really the other side anymore, because I think as an editor in chief, um, as a content creator, you're always storytelling, right? For me, what is really, really imperative is that you do authentic storytelling, whether you're doing it for a publication, whether you're doing it for a brand, as long as, you know, your storytelling is strong and you believe in what you're saying, it will always make a difference. And the difference starts from you. I do agree. I think that the lines are blurring a lot between the media side and let's call it the PR side or the communication side in general. One of our very common, very dear friends, Rian, who's been on my pod actually also, is now doing PR while he's also a content creator. But apart from that factor, have you seen a lot change over the last couple of decades? Do you feel like the way we're consuming and creating content has changed? I mean, see, the thing is that there's never going to be dearth of content consumption, right? So you're always looking for content. But yes, I agree that the way you're consuming content has changed and changed dramatically and will continue to change because technology is never going to stop, right? We would never think of, say, Instagram content creators 10 years ago, but it is the reality today. And tomorrow, who knows, there's going to be something else, which is going to be a completely different format. You know, there are things like AI, VR, which are so, so big now among a lot of industries. So, and I I see that becoming quite integral when it comes to content creation as well in the future, if not already. I think in some sectors, it's already very much in, but I do see that evolving. And I think that evolution Anam is going to happen and that's how it it should be right and it's really about as a professional how you adapt to that change and really take it in your stride and and what you make of it I started out primarily as a print journalist then became a digital writer then became a multimedia content creator and now I see myself more as someone who actually thinks from a brand perspective It's a bit of marketing, it's a bit of content creation, but all in all, the heart of it, it still continues to be storytelling. Do you feel like there's been a shift in lens in general into how you are creating content, even for print? Because I feel like, of course, you've had this journey which goes across only print and then only digital and then print and digital and I'm sure you're taking so many different lengths really and formats of content into consideration when you're even planning for TNL. Is it, do you feel like, okay, no, this is something that would do well on social but may or may not do as well in print or on the website? Are there filters that have seeped in? I think, you know, when it comes to filter, I think the most important filter is the age group that is consuming the content, right? So, for example, if you look at travel and leisure, because that's that's the brand that I work on so closely. With print, my median age is 38 to 42 okay. years, right? On digital, it's between 24 to 35. So right there, you have a 10-year age difference, right? Between the content that my print consumer is looking out for and my digital consumer is looking out for. So obviously, the way you're going to tell your story 
will change is going to change and has to be customized to the requirements of that particular tg and what they're looking for the kind of aesthetic that they're looking for the kind of information that they're looking for and the way they want to see or consume that story does it sometimes get overwhelming to look into so many different filters because i'm going to admit there are times when i want to just create content that i'm passionate about and not give a shit about how this is going to perform and what are the numbers going to be are there do you go through phases as well when you're like i just want to do good content does well does well doesn't do well you know, that, do i i think it's it's great it's a privilege that you have and it's it's not a privilege that i have unfortunately <laughs> or fortunately i like i like i love what i do but for me i think what is really really important is my reader it's very very important for me to understand what the pulse is at that point in time what my reader is looking for and how uh, because you know you're spending time when you're consuming a piece of content and how is that piece of content going to benefit you and how is that going to value add to your life because that's the only way you you'd get that reader back to your website or back to your magazine right so for me every time i do a story and the same story mind you could be in print format in digital format on social media as a reel you know on youtube but the way you package the story would be different depending on who your audience is and what that audience is looking for to answer your question does it get overwhelming for me actually not i mean i think it's um uh, Sometimes I'm like you know you can just do so much with one story. I think that was that never happened 20 years ago. You know you would always think very unidimensionally and that I think is has changed dramatically over the years. Now you're thinking from at multiple levels, right? You're you're thinking from the perspective of how it's going to look if you're doing a video story, how it's going to sound like now when you're doing a podcast um when you're doing storytelling through a print through the magazine for instance visually i mean visuals in terms of just like today for example especially when it comes to niche magazines and niche products it's literally for me a travel and leisure copy could well be a coffee table book you know because it's uh, it's beautiful right like from the cover package to the stories inside to the photo essays so it is so so visually driven as well and that's the difference right so for me i think uh, it can be challenging at times but honestly i i love that challenge i i like it because it just kind of puts you out of your comfort zone it makes you think you would have probably not thought otherwise you know the travel content space and i say this not just for magazines and publications like yours but even for creators like myself there has been a part of the audience that's kind of put us under fire for lack of any other way of saying it because they feel like we over glorify certain places and then not necessarily do their experiences match what we may have had i'll give you a little instance we were talking about a couple of destinations before we started recording and my one of my own personal hesitations has been you know while i love going on fam trips familiarization trips that for those of you who are listening who may not know is basically when you're invited by tourism boards and i love those experiences because i feel like you really get the essence of a place usually taken around by a local or whatever but sometimes i feel like what i'm getting is it the glossy finished version that a you know follower subscriber someone who subscribes to the magazine may not get it at the same level because we do get special privileges right when we travel with these tourism boards so what i've personally made an effort to do at my end is try to keep it as unglossy with the content and when mm-hmm. i say that i mean keeping it not just visually appealing as as a content creator i'll try to make sure that it's not just about the aesthetics it's also about information because i do feel like in the content i can only speak from the blogger side of it of course things in the travel space have become more about aesthetic and not necessarily actually enabling people to then go and experience it with travel information right because mm-hmm. everything's about that 5 second reel and not everything is factually correct no there are not all those countries let you just land in there with an indian passport you've seen those reels go around travel to these places with no visa beforehand and i'm like no there's like caveats to this mm-hmm. what's the magazine version of that because as a creator that frustrates me you know so i'll tell you um, there are various stages in a traveler's 
cycle, right? Like right from uh, where you start saying that, okay, hey, you know what, we'd like to go for a holiday. Mm -hmm. So it starts from that, that spark, right? And then comes the planning stage. Um, in between comes the inspiration stage, right? And I think the magazine fits in right there. So it, it's really about inspiring you to go and explore a certain destination. So the content that we push out there and put out there needs to be something which touches a chord somewhere, whether it's a culinary trail that you're speaking about or whether it's wellness travel, which is something that's really, really picking up post COVID. Mm -hmm. um, or even for that matter, you know, when you're focusing on stories, which which travel and leisure for sure, uh, like one of and I, I, you know, this already, Anam, that one of our core pillars is mindful travel yes. is sustainable travel. And that's something that we've been doing now, you know, since 2018. I mean, of course, now, when we started out, uh, this whole concept of sustainable travel or mindful pre pandemic, pre -pandemic was very, like very minuscule, very neat you know but of course like today it's become mainstream everybody's talking about it because they've realized where we stand now and what needs to be done right so I think where to answer your question where does the magazine fit in I think it's really to inspire you to take that leap of faith and go out and explore the world in the most beautiful way possible that's what we do I love that I love that you're using the word inspiration right because I feel like when it comes to travel, I never thought about it as breaking it up into those segments that you just did so easily. I've always thought about it from the lens of a lot of people usually would look at something and you're right, be inspired to put that on their bucket list and then consider the planning. But yeah. the magazines would fit in somewhere. Yeah, in I there. mean, it's actually a very known, known thing that sometimes the planning of your holiday actually gets you more happiness than yeah. the trip itself. <laughs> Tell me more about mindful travel, right? Because while you and I probably belong to the smaller section of society mm -hmm. that understands that, um, obviously, again, coming from the point of view of media and having access and privilege to dive deep into it. Mm -hmm. for, how would you describe mindful travel to somebody who is not really deep into the concept? And where would you recommend someone start from really you know i was having this panel discussion this afternoon and and something and with uh, with some of the top hoteliers in the country and we were talking about how important sustainability is and you know one thing is what is really important is to realize and to understand that the change starts with you when you are traveling how is that travel impacting your immediate surrounding uh, are you going are you choosing to stay in a property that helps local communities are you choosing to take a trip with a local guide are you choosing to go and eat somewhere where you know the vegetables are grown in their own farm so it's it's your choices that can make all the difference you know um, that little tip that you give to the guide at the end of your trip around Bapu Bazaar in Jaipur is probably his livelihood. And that's an impact. You're not probably realizing it when you're doing it, but you are making an impact right there. So the moment you become conscientious of these choices is where you start bringing about that change. So that change literally starts with the way you think and therefore the choices that you make. Whether you're doing leisure travel, business travel, any form of experience, it's the choice is in your hand, right? It's up to you to choose where you want to go, what you want to eat, who do you want to give money to, what are the kind of experiences that you want to do. And I think, would you rather go to a shopping mall and spend on high street fashion or would you rather go to the souk? and look at the local designers and the, the, the local culture and immerse with the local artists. So it's a choice that you're making. And we tell you to make that choice a little more conscientiously. That's really what it is. From 2018 to 2023, have you seen a substantial change in the reception of such content from your audience? Absolutely. Audiences? Absolutely. I mean, like I said, when we started Conscious Travel as a section, it used to be, you know, very niche. You'd have these boutique hotels talking about sustainability, you know, um, being completely solar panel, solar energy, working on solar energy, working on, you know, their own farms, uh, involving communities, etc. But today you have every single 
big hospitality brand talking about it right and actually living that so what used to be a very niche segment in hospitality pre covid today has become mainstream it's you know being sustainable in your choices whether it's you know saying no to single use plastic or whether it's uh, just being energy efficient for instance for a lot of properties or engaging with local communities supporting local experiences that's something that all hospitality brands are doing and that was not the case before but i think it's becoming so it's it's really really heartening to see that you know to to kind of see the way something as important as being mindful of the choices that you make when you're traveling as far as that goes how important it has become to all stakeholders in the hospitality and travel industry i think it's 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 extremely extremely heartening you mentioned one of the campaigns that you're working on at dnl and i think one of the other ones i have here on my notes even um has to do with people going places so if you can tell me a little bit more about that as well right because oh yes so you know when we started out with travel and leisure like when i been with the brand for now 5 years i mm-hmm. just completed 5 years and when i got onto the brand i kept thinking about what are people looking for what 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 is the kind of storytelling that would really make a difference and how what is going to be your usp or you know how do you basically connect with people and people connect with people right that's the way it is and any place that you go to every time you would speak to somebody um and they would share about their travel memories it would be about meeting somebody about having a great meal at a restaurant or you know meeting this great artisan or you know even even the landscape when it comes to landscape the guide has taken you to that particular point and how beautiful it was so everything somehow went back to people and then we thought and we said that why not bring that to our readers because people is what makes a place alive right imagine going to a place where there is no population or where there is no you know it be great for a night maybe or like for a few hours maybe you to be in solitude but you know just imagine so it was very very natural to tell stories through a personal lens through the lens of a person because that is what as a person you would relate to the most and therein was born our campaign of going places with people so whether it's telling a story through the eyes of a celebrity through the eyes of an influencer through the eyes of an expert through the eyes of our readers it's always a personal lens what's your absolute favorite thing about being in this space for travel content and what's your least favorite too i want to know both what's my favorite in being <sighs> as a travel writer you really really need to be passionate about it you know it's all hunky dory when 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 you say that oh you know you're traveling every day how cool is it it's really not that cool if you have to live out of a suitcase you know 25 days out of 30 days in a month um so you really really need to have that gumption and that love and i love it to be honest what i really love about travel content i think is just it's just it's just meeting people and it's just you know getting to know about different cultures getting to know about different experiences things that that can transform lives and i think that's very very special and things that you can do to make a difference in that space i think is what makes it super special for me when it comes to what i don't like about it i don't know i mean i've i I don't think I've got tired of traveling. I don't think I I ever will. That makes you living out of a suitcase is that could that be one of them? Sometimes it can get tiring for sure, you know. It's um uh, it can get sometimes it can be stressful because you also have a family. I have a daughter, I have two dogs, my husband, you know, my parents. So um it can be a bit tough when you have to balance it all. But I think if you have the right support system it all works out well so yeah i mean at times you have to make a choice do i take the trip or 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 do i stay back for my uh, daughter's graduation ceremony and that's a choice that you have to make again so yeah i think i think those those are the times where you where sometimes it might just like not you but yeah but it's overall i think if but yeah i completely completely believe that if you really want to sort of be in this field 
you have to be up for it and you have to be passionate for it because otherwise six months down the line, you're going to be hell tired and say, I don't want to do this anymore. So you really, really got to love to do this. I can completely relate to that because I feel like a lot of times people think that we have very glamorous jobs, right? Whether it's decking up and being in front of the camera or in your case, traveling a lot, which seems so great on social media, but it can be really exhausting. But is does does balance come naturally to you in these scenarios? Because one of the things, again, I struggle with, I feel like I'm asking you for advice over here. One of the things that I struggle with when I'm doing travel content is, should I capture this moment or should I just experience it, take it in? And then I it will register in me to then later be able to talk about it. That's a constant push and pull that I think I've internalized over a period of time. And I just kind of have to pick from one moment to the other. But is that something that comes naturally to you where you're like, okay, this is a write later about it moment versus, okay, this is a capture it now kind of moment. I think when it's a capture it now moment, you'll always know it's a capture it now moment, right? <laughs> I mean, it's... Uh, and I think it comes naturally to you. I mean, if you've done this for a while, you sort of know where to let go and where not to. Just an outsider's view for you on you is that I think you've cracked that balance really well. I don't know whether I've cracked it or not, but I just keep trying. You Let know? me paint a picture. We were at the we were at the white party, the pool party the day before we left in Udaipur, yeah. right? And everyone all around had their phones in their hand and cameras on because it was a lovely setup. Beautiful sunshine. Everything was decorated wonderfully. We were all in white. And you were probably, you and my husband were probably the only two people who were just having a good time without their cameras on phones in their hand. And I am I made note of this at the time when I was like, that's nice. Wait, what does that feel like? Because that's never me. <laughs> so I'm like, it's awesome that you're able to do that, which is why I feel like when it comes to travel... And when it comes to this, almost like this ticking clock in your head, like obviously I'm speaking for how I feel about it. I'm like, I want to live it, but I also want to capture it, but I also want to live it, but I also want to capture it. So I feel like, I feel like your learning curve is behind you, Angela, and that you've you've cracked it. No, don't say that. I mean, you know, it's a good I, thing. I, just, I mean, just, this is uh, a compliment. Yeah, I mean, for me, like I said, like for me, it's just like, you know, it's, well, learning, learning really stops the day you die. I'm not dying anytime soon, I hope. <laughs> so, um, no, I mean, yeah, but it is true that you have to sort of, like I said, you know, over over a period of time, you just you just learn to let go and you just learn to soak in um, things and soak in that moment. Um, and uh, I believe you, you do that, like I said, you know, over a period of time, you get to a stage where you know where to let go and where not to. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I don't know whether that's balance or maybe maybe you call it as balance. For me, it's just a learning. I love that. Drum rolls, please. So it's time for our next segment, Associate This. A fast-paced word association game where my guests get no more than 10 seconds to respond. So get ready, get set, associate so we play this game called Associate This over here on the pod, right? And typically I say words and you tell me what comes to your mind. But we thought it would be more fitting for me to name countries. Okay. And then you tell me what you think of when I name that country. Okay. So I'm going to name a few places and whatever comes to your mind. Don't think too much. Just say it. Okay. okay. I'll try. Alola. Surreal. Italy. Beautiful. Sri Lanka. Home. I don't know why I said that, but just feels like home. Singapore. Family. Venice. Ooh, romantic. Poland. Cold. <laughs> Spain. Mm. The food. France. Croissant. <laughs> India. Everything. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on the pod. Thank you so much for talking about your journey and content and travel and all of it from your very wonderful, very experienced uh, lens. I really cherish that because I feel like you've seen things change as much as they have over the last two decades. And you're someone who's managed to, I'm going to use the word again for the 50th time, balance. You're someone who's managed to maintain that balance between print and digital um, all while spearheading a publication and also 
having that sense of self you know which is really difficult to do in these times because you're basically managing two virtual identities out there on the internet um and i do think that you do that very very well thank you so much you're very very sweet and kind i must admit but it was a pleasure it was a real pleasure to catch up i think uh, this sort of session was long due and we finally had it on your pod thank you two more trips for sure <laughs> any time and any day <laughs> lovely